Welcome to the party, pal. I am Commander Tom, and welcome back to my cabin. And today we are going to go ahead and give it an upgrade. I want to give you, kind of give you an answer as to why I built my cabin the way I did, especially with these corners that extend over the roof. I had more conversations and questions about that, including insults to my build, which I can kind of see why. But when you have a plan and you're planning it from stages 1, 2, and 3 and such, these kind of things happen. To start off with, let's go ahead and get some supplies into my inventory, because I want to do a couple of things. I want to upgrade the workstation to level 3, and then I also want to go ahead and convert this cabin into a bit of a uh, lookout station. Uh, give myself a roof that I can actually survey my territory with. And I think that's all features that will be kind of cool. Now, I'm going to go ahead and make sure my inventory is full, but I'm going to try and not be overburdened. It looks like I've gotten that right. Well, let's go ahead and get the tanning rack set, which is what I need to get uh, crafting uh, level 3 for. Furniture... Oh, it's crafting, duh. So yeah, that would be under crafting. Think! <laughs> Alright, so we go ahead and uh, use 10 wood, 15 flint, 20 leather scraps, and 5 deer skin, and then we'll be able to put this in. And I agree with you. This should be a device that should allow uh, deer skin to be converted into leather scraps, but it doesn't right now. Maybe it'll get added in. I agree with you, it should. But the more important thing is that it does open up level 3 crafting from your workbench which is actually pretty decent. And go ahead and take a look at uh, what that opens up here. This allows you to start upgrading your tools more to like uh, level 2 axe, I think I already took that. But also you can upgrade your bow uh, and really start uh, getting a few additional hit points. Let's pay attention to the outside now. This is what I got the most complaints on. You have to have this thatch roof to count as a roof to count as an interior. But, I like to be able to have more of a looking tower situation. So, that's something that uh, we're going to go ahead and put on today with this uh, addition I'm building right here. I'm going to start off with putting two floor spaces to get this uh, stepped out over the wall. Then we're going to go ahead and grab, you'll need at least two but based on my uh, geography here, I might need to put in three uh, steps in order to get up to it. Let's see how this is going to suss out. I do like to put my steps flush against the wall, but that's personal preference. And we'll drop the second one down. And I was right, it looks like we're going to have to drop a third one down. Let me get the right angle on this. Alrighty, that should do fine. And then we're going to do the really simple thing of hop on up here, grab some more floor spaces, and then we are going to go ahead and cover the, uh, my roof with a secondary floor. That way, you know, whenever I want to, but especially in the mornings, I can just run up the steps, hop up onto this floor, and then we can get ourselves an observation point. Now, I will also give you an important safety message. Right this position right here, I'm okay, but as you start working near your chimney, smoke inhalation is a thing in the game, so you're going to want to kind of get in and get out quickly. If you hang out too closely near the chimney, you will take damage from smoke. I'm kind of surprised they built that in, but I'm cool with it. Alright, so as you can tell just from standing up here, this gives me a pretty good aerial survey of my kingdom. And this is, really hunt, uh, this is really handy for hunting. It's one thing that I really like about it. Uh, to make sure we don't fall into the chimney, I'm going to put some security wood beams around the uh, chimney itself. And then also, we are going to go ahead and use the uh, half vertical pieces. See what I mean by the chimney? I got sucked over into it. But uh, we'll use the half vertical pieces at the intersection of the floor pieces along the perimeter to kind of create a little bit of a safety banister for us to be able to uh, not fall off as easy and save those hit points. Oh shoot, I missed one. Let me go ahead and get this hammered out and I'll be with you in a sec. 
Okay, and then once you've got the verticals put in, we're just going to go ahead and go with the uh, full length horizontals to, you know, really make that banister feel, kind of the safety arm, that way you're not always running off the edge and not onto the ground. I, you know, if you can save those hit points, I always encourage saving them. Uh, and again, uh, let me go ahead and uh, get these hammered out. And okay, so once you've got the banister up, final touch I like to do is put a couple of torches in the corners. I just think it gives a really cool visual effect, especially at night. I'll try to get some night footage on this uh, show for you. But that way you've got a little bit of visibility, it's got a little bit of the fort lighthouse situation going on, it's what I like. Now comes the final thing. Functionally we're done, but aesthetically the comment section will eat me alive if I don't put this wall up, and I wouldn't blame you for it. So I do like to put this up Yes, you are completely encasing your uh, ceiling, but aesthetically it looks better. And then this then uh, gives you a uh, aesthetics that makes this look not so much like a cabin anymore and looks more like your fort. Or uh, if you wanted to carry this up higher, this could be a base for a lookout tower, which uh, would also be very uh, Viking-esque as well. I uh, go ahead and uh, get these last two or three uh, in there, get my angle right. Oh, more wood. Let me get that sussed out. Okay, and then once you're done, I'll give you the quick walk around here. Let me go ahead and uh, get switched over so you get a better view of it. This is your watchtower, or your fort, whatever you want to call it. And I think it looks fairly decent. It uh, gives you, uh, you know, protection from the elements, it gives you the ability to survey your territory conveniently without having to, like, MacGyver up anything, you just walk up the stairs and you get a good aerial view of what's in your neighborhood. I really like this at dusk and dawn so I can take a look at the territory and see what critters are there for hunting. Uh, speaking of hunting, I want to take a look at uh, upgrading some of these uh, tools, but if I'm not mistaken, I think, yeah, we're going to need leather scraps. So. That being the case, then, uh, I've got some... I don't think I have enough, though. Take a look here. If you did not see my uh, tutorial on how to stack your uh, storage chests, I do encourage you to check that out, because it's really nice to have storage in a compact situation. Uh, I think I'm still going to need... Yep, I need some more of uh, uh, leather scraps. But that's fine. That's why I have an arrow. I think I did go ahead and take the uh, upgrade on the axe because I was felling so much wood that I just needed to do that. So let me go ahead and let's get on to the hunt and uh, see what uh, Odin will provide. Okay, I don't know if I showed this in the last video, but near the area where I've set up shop, obviously we've all come across uh, derelict buildings before in this game, but there's something just aesthetically pleasing about this double lean-to and a campfire set right here. I really like that. That just has the vibe of, you know, a couple of people who actually did spend the night here for just a couple of nights, but they weren't going to move in. Maybe they were waiting for a ship. Maybe they were at a fishing stop uh, along the uh, water out there, but I really just like that. I kind of wonder if maybe we could set in beds or something there to, you know, put some life into it. Uh, and you get that aquatic view out there. It's a pretty solid situation. I like. That. I do like this uh, seed and this uh, little piece of land I've been able to call home, at least for the time being. All right. Ooh. Well, tails are good meat. Take a look here. Oh, that's embarrassing. That's ah, okay. I'll get him on this one. I'm not gonna miss twice. See. <laughs> but what I'm really looking for is. Bore. I'm trying to be boring here. First time I ever said that on camera. Um, but uh, let me see what else I can find. Back on the end. Alright, it looks like we've got a raspberry bush here. Only one man would dare pick the raspberries. Lone Star. Bonus points if you get that joke. Comment down below. <laughs> Alright, chance for redemption here. Got another neck, and... First try! There we are. <laughs> Hop on over. Alright. 
Now it looks like the sun is starting to come down here, so we should probably make our way back to base here. And it looks like we found our first boar, so... Whack it with the hex! <laughs> oh, I do love that. So much of this game sometimes involves just find a critter and whack it with an axe. <laughs> it's like a, one of those carnival games, whack-a-mole, it's whack a boar. <laughs> Uh, and as promised, that uh, fort looks pretty good coming in at dusk with the torches lit. If this helped you out, if you want to see more, that's what flip playlists are for. And if you want to know if I live to see tomorrow, leave a like and subscribe. I'm Commander Tom, and I will see you next time. Thanks.